fair to say there's a lot more smoke. There is a lot more smoke, yes. Right. Hello. How are we doing? So this is Matt that sent me the frog-eyed Scorpio headlight. <laughs> right, so this will explain all this paraphernalia and beautiful stuff later. I assume this is the, yeah, it's the one in on the old uh, bedstead. So this is the legendary Matador engine that won't, won't run. Won't start. Now, the Matador engine is famous for always starting. Always does, we said. You yeah. just doesn't, the pump can be out like nearly 180 degrees on the time and eventually there'll be enough diesel thrown in the cylinder, it will run. Yeah. And this one won't. So to prove a point, we'll go over the road. Right. The other yard. Yeah. We've got some derelict Matadors. Nice. It's snowing, it's cold, and we'll see if we can get one to start. Oh, nice Sherpa. It's not Sherpa, it's actually a LDV. So this... It's a Sherpa. It's got the transit running gear on it. With the oh, what's the one with the, air with the all the transit stuff in, isn't it? Yeah, so what they did was they took the best bits of a transit yeah. and then improved it with some LDV styling. Sherpa. Oh yeah, that's... Uh, so you've got yourself a little lucky Ford gear knob. Yep. Yeah. We've raided the Ford, Ford parts bin. Yeah. We've got me Hindu lucky charms. Yes, very good, yeah, yeah. Cheaper than RAC membership. <laughs> well, the big question with this whole thing is, uh, will it start? Of course it will, it's an LDV. Sure. Ooh, lovely today. Yeah, tropical. Was it about minus four? Something like that, and I looked in the gauge. Well, it's uh, not cold for some of the people in North America, but around here, and we For us. Oh, it's got the old, uh, the early cab, the old Wayman cab on it. Let's have a look in here. So, Roy, well, just actually just show everyone because people say, Oh, we probably had it running before. Well, here's some snow. Here's the manifold. Stone cold. And that is bloody stone cold. Oh. So, a bit of history about this one. Right. I bought this one in the summer last yeah. year. Yeah. It was in a scrapyard. And yeah. the only way they could get it out of the scrapyard, where it had been since the 80s, was to start it up and drive it out. Uh, and then it came back here and it sat about, and I last started this to move it in October. So that was what, four or five months ago? Yeah. So it hasn't run since. Um, on these, there's no glow plugs. No. Nope. There's no heater in the manifold or anything like that. Nope. There's no cold start button on the However, device. to the absolute horror of all the Disney World safe space people, what did they fit these with from they the factory? Had ether. They had an ether system that was mounted on the holes here. Yep. And then you that plug there. Yep. On the top of the manifold. There's yep. a lever just above it with a butterfly yep. valve. You pull a lever in the cab. Yep. That would shut that valve. Yep. And then dump a load of ether into that intake. What about stop. that? Hey. Factory fit. Yeah. Now this one's going to be a bit interesting to start because it's got no throttle mechanism. Nice. So we're <laughs> going to have to try and start it on tick over. Yeah. And then hope it runs. Yes. All right. So, oh, so they actually built nearly 11,000 Matadors in Did total. They? So from 1939 right up until about 1954. Incredible. And they reckon there's over 750 still around. Right, you ready down there? I've just got a handful of wires. Yeah, just jam them together, mate, and see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Keep it going. Oh, keep it going. Go on. Keep it going. Keep it going. Listen to that as she goes. Listen to that. Things are. <laughs> oh, so as I said, it's minus four a day. Snow. This hasn't ran since October. Before that, it hadn't ran since the early 80s or whatever. 
just incredible. Just incredible. Damn, nice, isn't it? Right, so just to let you know, we have got, you might be hear that. Right, so we've got electric fuel pump, so that's got there. We've just primed this through, so there's fuel in the system, all right? Uh, and as long as you've got that, as you say, there's no heat, there's nothing on a Matador engine, so uh, it will fire up under any conditions, normally. And we want to know, why this one isn't? Because this is this is probably what the first one I've ever come across that you can't even get it to cough or fart nope, or bark. Nothing. Is that right? Yeah. So, we've, but we've checked the fuel pump timing. Yep. We've checked the valve timing. Yep. We've even checked the tappet clearances. Yep. Everything is everything's well, there, right? Yep. Yeah, so she should run. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> We've got smokes, we're getting, that just shows we are getting fuel to the system. So, just try again, man. <coughs> oh. Now, <laughs> normally, what would come out of here if you've got an old worn engine would be, you know, oil fumes. We're getting pure diesel fumes. Let's take a rock cover off as well, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's just do that. And never... See what happens. Nice uh, rocker cover gaskets there. Very nice, yeah, yeah. Ooh, more smoke. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of smoke. There's there. a lot of smoke and it's all unburnt fuel. That is it's not yeah. oil, it's no. unburnt fuel. Right. Here's what we're going to do next. Have you got a blow lamp? Yeah. yeah. As long where the manifolds are, goes into the head here. We're just going to warm this up for a few minutes. All right, so that's warmed along that side of the head now. So it's going to do it directly in. So she's just give her a minute and just see. Well, it's fair to say there's a lot more smoke. There is a lot more smoke. Yes. So. <coughs> Right, so the old trick of the heating up the air intake, that hasn't worked. Right, I think now it's time that, um, yeah, what we'll do, I think we'll actually call our special guest, Mr. Cosby, to come on set. Haven't you ever noticed that after one of my barbecues and they have the sauce, people want to get right home? We'll give this a go. Do you no, think it's going to work? I'll be honest with you, I just, I, I, no, if it, that, that hasn't done it, it didn't even try, but I just want to show, because mm. we all know, basically, this stuff will get anything going eventually. Well, you can run an engine on it. You can, yeah, and um, I just don't think it's, no, so we'll, go on, give it a go. <laughs> Sound it. <coughs> I'm, I'm not messing around now. We're gonna double can this bastard. Should we let the smoke clear a little bit? Nah, let's just go for it. Okay, go on. Do the rock cover casket. <coughs> Are you there? Are you there, mother? <coughs> <coughs> I've got her side. We need to see why this engine isn't running. We know we've got 
some form of compression there. But people go, oh, that's all right, that will run on, on the diesel end. No, it won't. Don't forget the ether will combust at a lot uh, lower point than, than the diesel. That's why you use it. Just to, that's the whole point. This is a good example of using ether on a diesel because the ether will start, even like, right, so we've got, we know we've got no fuel actually combusting. But we did hear it running on the ether because the ether is combusting at that point, low, much lower down. Now, normally, it'll get warm then very quickly because you've got an explosion going on in the cylinders and that'll bring enough warmth and heat into the cylinder to start the diesel going and then you're away. That's what ether is about. That's why we use it. Now, two things. People say, well, you're just gonna ruin a good engine. And this obviously isn't a good engine. Otherwise it would be running. So, we want to find out why. My old boots. Let's uh, do a compression test then. There we go. So on a Matador engine, yep. according to the manual, doing a compression test, the optimum magical figure, figure is 490 PSI. Right, so 490, so just under 500 PSI. Now, that, an old sacked out one though, you know, which I've has done heard, it. I've heard a rumor yep. that someone said that they once got one to run at 325 PSI. Right. That's one of those things where everybody exaggerates how much pressure yeah. that they've got. Right, we've got our tester rigged up here. It doesn't help that the gauge is upside it's down. It's upside down, but that's all right. We can, we can do that. And uh, we want to see that. Realistically, we want to see that up somewhere up here. All right, that's where that needle wants to be. There's your 400, there's your 300. So we think anywhere from there upwards, we should be about right. So uh, give her a whirl, Matt. Do you see when it nearly fired? It went it's right, up. right up, yeah. But it's not, it's not going much above 280, is it? No, not at all. I think that's telling us all we really need to know, isn't it? Well, let's do number one, as it's an easy one to get to. All right, do number one then. <laughs> that one I'd say is about 240, 220, 240. So I think we've got the inevitable's going to happen now. Heads off. Heads off. Pistons out. Yep. Alright, let's go. Yeah, for the let's do that. I'll start unbolting the cylinder Send heads. The heads, yeah. Hoses are undone, so that's all alright. And that one straps the bench behind you. Oh, oof. yuck. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, let's have a look in here. My word. Now, we didn't do a compression <laughs> test on number no, six, we did didn't, we? did we? Oh, yeah. I mean,. I think we may have found a problem. Yeah. Hmm. So, might need a new piston. Right, Marcus, this gives us a fantastic chance now to look firsthand um, at an engine that has gone all the way down the path and been ruined just because of a lack of maintenance and understanding uh, and the use of ether. Um, but, like I said, the whole, you know, all oh, get addicted and they just explode. It doesn't just happen like that. There's a series of events that lead you to that point. And this is how it goes. So that engine, one day it doesn't start. And rather than find out why, you simply just reach for the old can of Cosby, the old party gas, and give it a squirt and it runs. Now the next day when you've got a bit of time, Rather than just think, right, we know we've got fuel in that because it runs and whatever, we've got good batteries, everything on it. We'll do a compression test to see if, you know, she's actually got some compression in the cylinders. Maybe they're worn out, maybe the pistons are worn, maybe the rings are worn. We won't do that. We'll just give her more of this each day. And but after a while, because the rings or the balls or the pistons, whatever's wrong in there, is getting worse and worse and still wearing, that hasn't gone away. This isn't a rebuild in a can. You need more and more, to the point eventually you're using so much that you're damaging the injector nozzles and they're pouring fuel in, so they're not even spraying in properly. So you're dumping fuel in, 
you're using tons and tons of this now because it is so worn that you know there's hardly any compression in there that will just burst into life one day some parts of this will just break up jam up throw up in the top start going off like a grenade in there and then you've ruined it and i think that's what we've seen with that aec engine but as i said that could all have been prevented if at this point it didn't run one day and you think well that's strange he normally does I wonder what's up with her she's done a compression test and you'd have seen that they actually she was down in maybe one or two cylinders then you can investigate further maybe you know put new rings in or a new piston whatever you needed to do but you'd addressed the problem rather than going down this course of events and as i said that's what happens this stuff is absolutely fine either on a cold morning on a good engine little squirt and it'll be away because it obviously ignites at a lower temperature than diesel and you're away that's absolutely fine an engine rebuild first start bit of that just to get the fuel up that's away now if that engine that you've rebuilt continues to need ether you've got a problem so you need to stop go back and find out what's wrong right so this one as we said is a timber variant so it had one of these bodies on originally for troops and artillery you know ammunition and stuff but it's got this on instead so they cut the bodies down or cut them off totally a lot of them were just cut off completely put a, welded a big another chassis on almost with these a front and they fold back out the back like that and then they used a winch to crane stuff up all the timber now this was quite a famous lorry used by quite a famous timber company this one now when you got this didn't look like that did it <laughs> no because no. I can remember this when you got it and they were going to scrap it weren't they I think they actually started scrapping. they'd scrap it because they'd cut the cab off yeah but they hadn't gone about it how you remove a cab which is to take all the panels and then lift it with a telly handle because mm -hmm. when you got this I remember they'd cut the pedals through hadn't they just to rip everything just to so well, nothing they, caught they weren't interested in restoring them no it was just cut no. the engine out put it in another matador keep going yeah that's right now, weren't and you the first person to drive it? I no. was actually, yes. So, <laughs> if you remember, we had, there was no cab on it. No, and this was over 20 years ago? It was 20, quite a year ago, yeah, yeah. Well over 20 years ago. So there was no cab on it when we got it, because Matt was going to do the cab separately, obviously. Um, but what we had, we got the engine to a point where we we're going to go for, <laughs> one of my earliest will it starts, actually. We had a Fordson Major on the front, hooked yeah, on the yeah. front. Yeah. And the seat was a piece of RSJ, which was bolted upright, then another piece of RSJ across the top with a piece of timber on. And I balanced myself on that. And I think we dangled a can of uh, Coke We had a bottle Coke bottle off, off the, the back of the jib to yeah. get the height, to get some gravity for fuel, didn't yeah. we? And we towed it, and eventually she fired up, as they do. Well, in most cases, as they do. And, yeah. And then since then, as I said, you've really got the town on it. And it's just, it's probably one of the nicest timber tractors I've seen, you know. But I say because of the history of it, it really, really is nice. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we are. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a look uh, at when we start pulling the pistons and seeing a bit more in depth of what's actually gone wrong. It ain't good. <laughs> and we'll also then look a bit more in depth at one of the matadors itself and uh, have a good look around and get one running. Now, a big thank you to each and every one of you that has bought something from the online shop, which is uh, lordmuckshop.com. Whether that's a t-shirt, a mug or a sticker or a combination or whatever, just thank you. Um, and once I finish doing this video, I've got to go and pick up more t-shirts from the printers because they're done. So, and I'll be packaging them up and getting them sent out. Muckers, keep an eye on your emails because as we go and do each one of your order numbers and it's done and packaging out, you will get an email to say that it's on its way, all right? So if you haven't had one yet, you will be getting one. So keep an eye on your emails, Muckers, all right? But uh, with that as well, just to let you know, t-shirt wise, we have reached 200 sold. I think that's 202 as it stands. 
Uh, that's absolutely fantastic because we can make a donation now to protecting pre-loved border collies. You know, the people that rehome and look after the collie dogs that you know are chucked out or neglected. So it's absolutely fantastic. And that's just down to you, Mark. It's purely down to you. Absolutely wonderful. Now with that, as I said, it will be a limited run of t-shirts. We're not gonna keep them in the shop forever. So we've reached the number and the closing date to get a t-shirt, if you still want one, is Saturday the 20th of March, all right? And uh, we'll keep them in there till then. After that, they won't be in the shop. The mugs and the stickers will, but not the t-shirts. Now in the next few weeks, uh, I'm gonna be doing a bit more work on the old major. Got one or two jobs to do with that because I'm gonna give that away, as you know. And um, I want the space, see? So yeah, I'm just gonna give it away. Now, just to be absolutely clear, because one or two people, it is not a lottery or a prize draw or a sweepstake or anything like that, right? Or a competition. I'm just gonna give it away. Simple as that, all right? So it's not a competition, lottery or sweepstake, none of that, muckers, all right? I'm just gonna give it away because I want the space. Now, the other point I forgot to tell you all is obviously, as I said to you about your orders, if you had a t-shirt or whatever, just keep your uh, order numbers to hand because yeah, you never know when they'll be useful in the future. Right, Muckers, this week's question. It's actually a question that uh, the old Fud Weasel threw across to me. And I said, well, I'll ask you a lot. So, basically all it is is that we've got a, a Ford, I think it's a 2724T, which is um, similar to the A8100 engine, but this is a factory turbo. They use them in compressors and generators. It doesn't stand as a lot, you know, it runs and that's about as good as it gets. So, what we were going to do, just one afternoon, him and me buggering about, we want to know what fuels it would run on, you know, get it to run on. So, we are going to try like some kerosene, some Avtur, you know, and um, various mixes of fuel and see if it would actually run on how bad and rough it sounds. And then we sort of said, you hear all these people sort of say, oh, I can start an, I don't need ether, I start an engine on Lynch deodorant, or I start an engine on WD-40 or stuff like that, or tyre shine and all this. We want to try that. So we just turn the pump off, so it's not going through the injector pump, straight in the intake, we'll spray these things, you know, like ether, we'll try to get the cheek right, I think that will do, we know that, and just see if these things work. Um, so yeah, that's basically it, Marcus. We're just gonna have a mess around. And he said, but you wanna film that? And I'm like, nah, I'm you know, we'll just do it. A couple of bottles of beer and a burger and we'll do it. And uh, he's like, no, no, film it. They'd like to see that. So that's the question, Marcus. Do you wanna see us sort of bugging about with this engine? Try to get it run on various fuels and solvents and deodorants, stuff like that. Put your answers in the old squid pit below. It's that time again, Marcus. So, until the next one. Be well.